we're the only people there. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sure somebody will come on. Hi. Oh. We're doing cat cam. Yeah. Oh, that's the other one. Yeah. Shadows haven't been in yet. They did poke each other last night in Shadow One. Here's that other cat again. Well, no one's in there now. Hmm? No one's in there now. Hmm? No one's in this meeting now. No. <laughs> We're all we could talk about it. Uh, look at the weather. We shouldn't bother to do a street cleanup, frankly. No one shows up. No. Like, you have to I get on to something else that yeah. was exciting. Um, I mean, we're, everybody would be excited about something, and then everyone would go out and go clean up and come back. Oh, here's Christine. Snow possible after 10. Possible. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get a weather. Or a... Hi, Christine. Hi, yeah. Hello. Early birds, huh? I think so. We've been sitting <laughs> here like, you know, <laughs> frogs on a log. <laughs> That's not what you look like, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see frogs on a log. <laughs> Although, God, today I, I took the dogs out and walked down the chicken coop and the red-winged blackbirds are all mobbing my feeders. And the other birds, were everybody was singing and it was really quite beautiful out, you know? In that today, couple I actually hours. went out and, and took a walk today. Yeah. Just, it, and the birds are singing. <laughs> it's, are. Really, it's really nice so spring is in the air i think so even though tonight we're getting sucked with snow hopefully theoretically <laughs> I, I never hold my breath for that you know yeah, i know but i could actually i wouldn't mind some snow mind no. either i totally wouldn't mind i know because you know all i'm doing is sitting home and watching you know it turn into a winter wonderland that's fine i know me. i know have a wood wood stove going and yeah it'd be really nice hi pam okay hey, how are you christine Good. hey bill hi stephanie boy we beat loretta huh oh <laughs> she's not here not yet no. <laughs> us, us, us chickens Just here us. oh my gosh i hope everything's okay hmm yeah, me too, because I heard from somebody who she hadn't answered someone's email, which was sort of interesting. I hope she's huh. okay. Well, it's not actually late, late. Yeah. It's seven o'clock. <laughs> it's like meeting start time. And the recording's already started. So I guess Mike started the recording already. The recording has started. We, it was just, like I said, it was just Bill and I being recorded. We're like, right. okay, here we Looking are. Looking like frogs on a log, you said. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hi, Gwen. How are you? 
Hi, Gwen. Hi. Oh, there's, there's the Loretta. You're never late, Robes. Hi, Loretta. <laughs> you're late. No, you're never late. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh. All right. Oh. All right, is everybody ready for some snow? Oh, I am saying we all wouldn't mind a little. <laughs> You're okay. acting like it's an unusual event. It, it is. Snow. It's February in Connecticut. I know, it is. Really. Okay. Oh, in Connecticut's how strange, you know. Yeah. Usually by <laughs> February, I'm like. Okay, we got to get this over. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is. It's actually almost March. It is basically March. Right. The March neighbor's paper is already out. So, you know, <laughs> it's already March. And it looks so pretty when you see the ice on the tree. Oh, oh, the, ice, the ice was gorgeous. And even this little yeah. last snow, I had to go down to um, Hartford and I-84 for the exits right, you know, the three exits was spectacular because there was still probably some ice or water on the trees and it captured all the snow. It was gorgeous. Right. And, you know, the animals need this, this snow cover. Oh yeah, they, the plants do too. We need yeah. it, we need it too. <laughs> yeah, really. Hi Steve, you turned into just your name. <laughs> He's here in spirit. Steve, are you are you on camera? Or are you there? I'm here. I'm dealing with my dog. Sorry. Oh, okay, no oh, problem. You don't, to, you don't want um, to see that, huh? Okay. Uh, I was just in a meeting where the big dog stole someone's gloves and chewed them. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh wow. Mine's just whining. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Actually, the next meeting, I'm just reminding myself, I'm going to make sure we approve the past minutes because there's probably been several minutes that we haven't approved. So um, last time I had mentioned to you about maybe um, joining this CLCC, um, which is an organization that works to protect the land and everything, um, and whether or not we should... Um, join for $150. They do a lot of legislative action. And um, so I don't know if people checked their website um, or looked at it or had any thoughts, any more thoughts about it. Um, and if you don't, we can, we can post it for next time or whatever. I just thought it was a, a really good organization. I know they, they've done some really good work, particularly on issues of importance to us, like um, land use and um, being sensitive to the natural resources and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so let's join and then let's get them to write a letter for to the planning and zoning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually dead serious, but no, I I get it. Yeah, really. Um, I don't think we'd have enough time to do that. Well, it's amazing how fast people can make a turnaround sometimes. But I think I, I am always pro um, somebody who's up on legislation and who will go yeah. advocate. Yeah. Yeah, really. yeah. Sounds like a good use of the money. Yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. I, I make a move that we join them. Okay. I second the motion. Do we have a quorum? Yeah. I think Janet's the only person who's not here. So if we have a quorum, can we have a vote on this? Okay. Shall we have a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So vote passed. Um, 
<clears throat> so next item on the agenda is uh, our trash cleanup day. Now, maybe I was mistaken, but last time I thought we had made a decision to do it on the Sunday following um, Earth Day. I think that sounds great. So, oh, and Ian Preston wants to help us again. Yay! Yes. Excellent. Yeah, I just got a text from him a couple of days ago and I told him we wanted him back. Oh, excellent. He's our yeah. star. Yep. That he's he really has really helped out and encouraged other people and he has this large family network so it looks like a lot of people standing there. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> but we need Excellent. to help, um, you know, when we all head out to do uh, the cleanup, um, we and need someone signs. there. He has signs yeah. that he puts up. Yep, that's true. Oh, and I'm going to be getting in touch with the school and maybe the local churches to see if we can drum up some support with them. Oh, good. To get some more volunteers. Good. I, I still have gift cards. Oh All my right. gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> I to do that. Well, might as well. Might as well. And in, in all fairness, there are a lot of people who do pick up their roads and just don't yes. come out on that day yeah. or say, yeah, you know, I'm I'm doing this on a regular basis. Steve does that. Um, I know. But I think that um Sometimes there's not people who actually do it, but we're, I think we're hoping this time that we can get a good group of people out on the roads. So then people, other people who are driving by can see, hey, wait a minute, you know. Because it is just incredible out there. Oh, right. God. Eight, is it 89? Uh, and 74. It, oh, God. oh, God. It's so and disgusting. Hill Road and, and Crap Road. And oh, it's gross. Yeah, it's amazing so gross i'm just disgusted with people me too christine i agree <laughs> with you i just said to my cousin today i hate people really I'm just <laughs> ugh. <laughs> ugh. <So> dirty <laughs> it used to amaze me i drive uh, i once in a while I would drive on uh, long island expressway or something and it's just like trash city right i'm ugh. starting to look a lot like that <laughs> yeah like uh 270 in Washington. Yeah. In Maryland. Ugh. Unbelievable. Yeah. So so is it the 23rd the date? Well, yes, I'm... April. April. Yeah, 23rd. it's a Sunday. That's a Sunday. Okay. We'll be here. And we will also um put in giving Ian some credit for doing that in yeah. the citizen so that he gets something at least yeah. for that, for his oh. effort and work. Oh, yeah. Right. oh good, yeah. Because I, I think for a business person to take that much interest in our town, I think we need to support that and say, yeah, yeah this is what all businesses should do, you yeah. know, kind of thing, um, mm -hmm. which would make for a, a nicer, cleaner town, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of another issue. Um, the other thing I know that Christine had brought up and Gwen wanted to talk about the uh, planning and zoning thing, but let me just check in with people. I know before the winter started, we had made a decision to continue on the Zoom meetings through the winter. So I just wanted to get a vote from people in terms of, do you wanna stay with the Zoom or do you wanna go back in person or, What's what's feeling? <laughs> Zoom is good. Zoom is good. Zoom. Yeah, it's Zoom. so much easier. Oh for man, us. So it saves much gas. Easier. It okay. saves yes. gas. Every kind. It of does. Thing. Saves elderly people driving on the roads at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that all of us? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> me. <laughs> so it seems like everybody's in favor of staying with the Zoom. Yes, yes that was great. We'll meet okay. at Trash Day in person. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So um, we can move into um, the um, IID zone and, and the zoning, proposed zoning changes and 
I think maybe most people were at the hearing, the last hearing. Well, there were 120 plus, so chances are high we were there. Mm -hmm. I'd I really like to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Steve. I, I missed the beginning. I, I had another meeting, but uh, that's I, okay. I was on until the, the very end. Yeah. Um, and it was a long meeting. It was oh, yeah. and a half hours. I and there were, me, Steve, I came late too, but we could still get the gist of it. And there were still at 1130, there were still 78 people on the phone, on the call. Wow. We, so at we the, the top leave. of the we had, we falling asleep. At the top of the minutes, um, Mike put, or whoever put in um, the attendance throughout the meeting, and it started at 120 something. And then at the end, it was still 78 or nine or something. It was incredible. <laughs> Update, there's a petition going around now. There are <gasps> petitions being circulated by the, um, I was just at that meeting. So yeah, there's a committee to keep Ashford rural that's doing a lot of really hard work about this. There will be signs, there will be petitions. How can we, how can we sign the petition? Um, I'm, okay, I'm a public citizen right now, not a member of the commission. I will be at, okay. dump, at the dump next Saturday with a table and petitions and information. You know it's supposed to snow on Friday. <laughs> yeah, but this is Saturday it's supposed to be kind of nice. Okay, um, great. Work Saturday, I'll be there. But can I come after work and sign? Um, I, I'll have petitions. <laughs> okay, great. I was asked to circulate, but I, I can't do it because I work six days a week. Otherwise, I would. I, I only would have Sunday to circulate. The petition is not on the website? Um, I'm No, because we want ink. Oh, okay. All right. And that's yeah. on the fourth. You're going to be there then. Yeah, the, this, uh, is that this next Saturday? Okay. And that's separate from the letters that we write. Yeah, the letters are from everybody, so everybody write letters. But can I can I just ask if we can, as a commission, write a letter? You know, the um, the uh, development people wrote a letter. Why can't we? Right. They had. They had multiple people speak but they also had a letter from their their commission sure oh I'm you mean economic development yes there was an economic development letter from the economic development commission right in I think, favor i think it's important um i was talking to someone today who said that um the chair of the pzc is under the impression that one third of the people yeah. were in attendance we're in favor of yeah. the proposal. I, I would beg to disagree. Um, well, I, the numbers, I, but so. but I don't know how he arrives at that number. Uh, there's no census taken of the people that attend the meeting. So okay, I put, I put together. I listened to the um, uh, recording, which is online, and I um, went through all the letters and I tabulated everything. Um, all those tabulations are in a letter I wrote. It's in Neighbors that is already on the Neighbors website and will be in stores in your town tomorrow or the next day. So there's a letter with all those numbers. And in terms of the letters, there were only, I think, six. Well, let me pull it up. There were... Um, before the hearing, the commission received 52 public comment letters. 47 in opposition and six supporting the proposed change, changes. At the hearing, 21 individuals spoke in opposition and eight spoke in support. So he's using just the people who spoke. So, you know, that sort of is one third. But in terms of public letters, 47 opposition, six supporting. So, you know, he's kind of cherry picking. Um, I've been told that it's very important to go to the next meeting and March. Absolutely. Speak. We are we will be allowed to talk. We will be we will be allowed to have a voice. Yes, just but so. even if you don't want to write a long speech, just write, even if, if you want to say a couple words for or against, the numbers will be counted. They so are it's counted. Important. It's recorded. It's public record. As are the letters. There have also, since I wrote this, I guess there now are 90 letters. So up from 52 to 90. So since the hearing, um, 30, 
eight more people have written letters. And I, I believe most of those are in opposition. Yeah, it is important though, what the PZC chair thinks. And, it is, and but we need to show him numbers. Agreed. Isn't this an issue that we could vote on as a town? No. And you can't? No, it's up to Ooh. them. It's up to that. It's community. so serious though. It is. And that's it's, why and it's people need to be. People this is irreversible. If we have people that are stupid and they're throwing trash on the ground, people like us can come and pick it up. Once you have this mega place, whether it's it's being used or it's abandoned later or whatever, it's it's irreversible. And if we pollute yeah. the water, it's almost impossible to clean it up again. Yeah, and they're not thinking about really once these builders and developers leave or whoever rents, whatever happens, once they leave, the financial responsibility is going to fall to the town well, and there may not be tax money coming in or not enough. I mean, so much is going to get destroyed. Ugh. Night, I just Night skies are gone, the water, air. Yep corridor, wildlife corridor. Um, and then Loretta spoke and mentioned Jean Pillow's um, report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't this be summarized? The by report, us? they have the report. They have the report. That's in the public letter section. Right, right. Again. I mean, I'm in a conservation commission, a letter from all of us and, and putting that in writing. Well, that can be done. Who I wants think to that, do it? I think I can help. I'll put, I can do a draft, Loretta. Okay. I'll Good. send you a draft. Uh, maybe I'll circulate right. to everybody. Let me also yeah. tell you that several people had call, have called me or emailed me because I think there's confusion in the town about how planning and zoning actually works. Right. And so they're thinking, you know, and I said, no, this is not what conservation does. We don't set planning and zoning, right. you know, and I said, the commission is, is opposed to all this for a number of reasons and encouraged people to um, either call the chair. And I think one man was going to do that after he hung up, he said, I'm going to call the chair and, or write a letter and go to the meeting, um, the hearing on the 13th. But I was shocked by the people who have emailed me expressing mega concern about all this and oh yeah there is i've been on the commission for 17 years i've never seen this outpouring there was somewhat of an outpouring when we did the langhammer thing when they, the town wanted to sell it but not as extensive as this and people are very very upset they're yep. very angry and they say that and i i couldn't believe the person who was living in the Ashford Motel, who got cut off. Yeah, right. The homeless guy, basically. And, and I, I was like, wow, you know, yeah. this is really sad that this man had something to say. And he waited yeah. 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 in line yeah. for yeah. a Patiently. long time. And then he didn't think he was heard. I know. And, yeah. and yeah. that was very sad that that happened because I think well, people needed I, to hear the impact of all this. Yeah. Because this developer saying, oh, the town is going to get the, no, the lawyer it's vacant land <laughs> is saying, oh, all this wonderful things. And that it's not necessarily true that there's going to be lower taxes because we have this big warehouse sitting up there. No, no. Oh, we'll have to pay for it. We'll have to get, we'll have to pay our firefighters and probably have, get more equipment. We'll have to yeah. probably have a police department and we will definitely have to have uh, more government, somebody who can monitor the damn thing, because nobody on planning and, zo zo and zoning is capable of doing that. We will have to hire somebody to monitor. Yeah. So we will have to build Valerie, bigger government to do that. Valerie Oliver brought up a, a good point. She said, how in the world did this ever get, ever pass for an industrial park part of Ashford with the wildlife corridor, the Mount Laurel sanctuary there, and, and then two headwaters Headwaters for this watershed with Maury Pond and with the, and Fenton, the Fenton River headwaters. That's wait. why they had restrictions, Gwen. And that's I see. What, why we had restriction on the size, restrictions on the height, you know, and no warehouses and no distribution centers. The, 
the people who wrote the those present zoning regulations were well aware of the sensitivity of that area and wanted to preserve as much as they could and also acknowledging that the town needed some business income and apparently the big deal is that this is what's going now warehouses and distribution centers are going up everywhere and that's one thing that you know this developer now i th i think the developer is the owner of the property no, well no so no. the guy starting with r rocalicus or whatever owns part of no. the land this uh campanelli group has bought the ashford motel part of the land so those two together now own that whole side okay all right so they are owners of that land right. but That's they're both out of state they're both from massachusetts mm -hmm. neither of them are ever going to live here so it's so an out of state Christine, they have about eight or nine of these big. Oh, yeah. Go to the Campanelli site. It's unbelievable what they build. You know, it's like uh -huh. unbelievable. So so I think what you what you just said, Loretta, is a really important point. You know, presumably the people that originally made this designation knew what they were doing. Right. And and they, mm -hmm. you know, they they had a good reason for limiting it. Right. And now, you know, uh, it's good to mention those reasons because have have any of those reasons changed? Probably not. I mean, certainly not, you know, the sensitivity of the area. Uh, uh, things Rural like character. That. What? Yeah, yeah, all that. Um, uh, and, you know, that should be said somehow. Um, uh, that's a, I think it's a really important point because what they're asking for is a change to that logic, okay? And, you mm -hmm. know, why would we do that? You know, it was done in good faith before. So, mm -hmm. You know, people, people limited it for some reason. I said so, that in my letter. I yeah. said that, that this was created. There was an important reason for this. Great. Yeah, you guys should know though. Once. You guys should know though that even the regulations we have are incredibly non-specific and incredibly open to interpretation. So right now we could have a 250,000 square foot building there. That's 17 or 18 football fields. That's already humongous. So that's within our regulations now. We right. can have an industrial site with a 250,000 square foot building on that site. That's in our regulations now. So our regulations as they are now are very nonspecific and very open and dangerously open. So this company has come in and they want to just throw those out and make it a free for all. But even well, they want, great. Christine, they want no size. I know, I know. There's no, no, no top size for them. That's that's exactly the way it is for agricultural projects, right? And, but this and, is the yep. which which could be a million square feet and is in Rhode Island, right? Sites. Well, so, this could be too. If this goes, if this were to go through, there is no upper limit, right? And and like you said. They would have to farm out the administration of all this. There would they would have to hire a, you know, all kinds of people. Uh, a town, yep. a town manager probably. Yeah, you know? yep. uh, yeah. And no, it, it, it we would include. Oh, you're everybody. muted, Steve. <laughs> um, there's so many things that that would need to change. You know, people. People in the assessor's office, how would they, do you think they could manage, you know, uh, taking stock of all, everything that's there? You know, they need help. And, and you know, the other big thing I thought, it was kind of sad what um, I thought our fire chief said. You know, he didn't, he did not, I, he was, he was personally insulted excuse me, you know, that's not why you're here. You should be here with a report on why or why not the fire department could handle, you know, a building this size or could they, you know, it, it, it was a little sad, 
uh, what was said about about that. I would have it would have been more professional for him to address the the questions at at, at hand. I think. Yep. Well, you know, and and to me, the really scary part is. So, what happens if you know it burns or the somehow something happens and it's abandoned? What happens then? I mean, I just wrote a letter to the Board of Selectmen and Planning and Zoning asking, why hasn't anything happened with the burned out house across from the fire station <laughs> right. for four years now? It is actually exactly four, four years. years now. Can't we do anything about that? I looked through the planning and zoning regulations. There's a definition of abandoned building, but there's nothing in the regulations about what to, what to do with them. And that's an historic building. That that was the old Hungarian schoolhouse. It's not a building anymore. It's a burned out hole. It is. And, you're and right. it's a magnet for kids. It's like incredibly dangerous. And it's been four years. And it's right across from the firehouse. How ironic is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the other thing is, um, I wonder so if, if we can't can... get if we can't deal with that, how are we going to deal with a mega warehouse? Well, well, well I, at, at a October event, I actually spoke to somebody who was in charge that day. Um, it was a chief, and I think the town is Basra or something, and he's like an hour away. And he is the one who makes the calls, but he couldn't see it burning because he's so far away. So I, the whole setup seemed wrong. Somebody, somebody should be at the firehouse and uh, or patrolling or you know something. How could it take that long to report a fire for somebody driving by on a main road to report that? And it's and why it's still there. Why is it still there after four years? <laughs> well, so evidently there are tractor trailers, you know, the, the big moving things parked on that property yeah. full of caustic chemicals. Oh, I didn't know that. You can see if you if you can go to Google Maps, there's a kind of drone shot or whatever. You can see there's all kinds of crap all behind it. It's right. And, on it, the, oh, and it's, right, it's, on the it's river. right by the Mount Hope River, right next and, to it, which you can seep into because these things are deteriorating. I asked my neighbor, you know, couldn't we get, you know, I don't know, EPA in to remove this stuff. It's going to seep into the river. And he said, no, it's too small for them. They won't get involved in it. So it's too small for them. It's clearly too big for us. So we're yeah. stuck with those kinds of things. We've yeah. got a brownfield. We've got yeah. a burned out house on Route 74. There's that truck, uh, trailer truck thing that's all caved in sitting oh, right yeah. on the road. Yeah. There are empty storefronts and the two little molly kind of things. There uh, is a pile of junk at a house um, at Pratt <laughs> Road in 74. I mean, we we are generating eyesores to beat the band. And Rashford. nothing can be done about it? Nothing? So how on earth can we deal with a mega warehouse? So, You're right. So here's a here's another thing. You know, traffic and, is- And piles of white marshmallows on Parker Road. So, so traffic, <laughs> traffic is a, is, one of the biggest things that people are concerned about, I yeah. think. And it's surprising to me, and I don't know if anybody's explored this, but have you ever driven Route 190? Um, oh yeah, all and, the time. And, and do you know what that road is like? Yeah. That road is a dangerous road. Yeah, it's curvy, windy, hilly. Um, it's, you know, I'm not sure that that, you know, and presumably this warehouse would serve that area too. Wouldn't it be a shortcut to get to absolutely know, north, Northern Connecticut? Uh, and 89 is also windy curvy. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's very odd that um, uh, they would choose a site like that. You know, I, I'm not sure who would find it attractive, but apparently they think so. Uh, but in any case, you know, Stafford, Union, they would be affected too. Yeah. So um, uh, just because it's in 
Ashford, most of it's in Ashford, doesn't mean uh, it wouldn't be bad for those towns. I mean, even the Willington people showed up, you know, so. Yes. Um, and Mansfield. Right, yeah, oh, Mansfield so, too? yeah, so. Yeah, right, so. Christine, let other people speak, right. okay? Right. Go ahead, Steve. I think. Oh, yeah. No, I was just saying, you know, I think that's a consideration too, you know, the, the, the surrounding roads, you know, all the the main state roads out of there are just not suitable for heavy traffic loads, you know, tractor trailers and things. So um, those, those, I mean, Ashford should be thinking about their neighbors too. So. Um, and I agree with that. People shouldn't say it's not on my road. I don't care. This is the North part of Ashford. Well, it affects all of us. And I just want to say, Steve, uh, what you used to talk about, you know, the agricultural size and wor your, your worries about that. And I thought you were being a little bit dramatic, but I take it all back. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no, because, because really, I mean, there's, there's, there's one that stopped mid construction in, in Rhode Island. It, it, it'll probably start up again soon, but it's, a um, it's a over a million square feet and, uh, you know, any farm in, in Ashford could be ripe for that sort of thing now. And, mm -hmm. and the other thing I'm afraid of is that they'll do the same thing that they did with the agriculture. They'll go, eh, you know, we don't really want to be, we just want to have this thing be approved and then we'll leave the details to the CEO. Um, you know, it, uh, that that's what they've done with the agricultural part and it's a little sad um it, it, it the blanket um the blanket size is is really scary you know um so we should definitely be opposed so to that. i i have a question i guess um Given that there seems to be overwhelming support um, to deny this petition um, from the owner of this property among town folk, and given that, at least according to you guys, um, what you've heard, that the um, chairman of the planning and zoning feels like um, there is not an overwhelming um, movement um, in that direction. What can we do as a commission um, to add our voice to perhaps uh, giving data and information to the chair and the commission um, in a way that would help them see that it's not a third of the town is in favor of having a potential warehouse there, that in fact, there are more people who are against it than that are for it. <clears throat> Because I think that if you have data that shows that it would be very difficult um, for the planning and zoning to say, well, we made a rational decision, even though all the townsfolk were against it. You know, it's, it's hard to um, go against the way the river is flowing. I think the best thing is what Christine was talking about, the, the, the petition that's going around and that. Well, I, I was confused, Christine, when you said that he thinks that a third of the people are for it. And and I'm having given some hours to listening to everybody talk during the meeting. I didn't take notes, but it seemed like the majority of people were against. Yes. Um, oh, right. Well, if you say... Stephanie, if you say a third of the people are for it, that still means what? 
two thirds are not. Or against it, yeah. <laughs> you know, but if he's if he's looking at that, that 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 is supporting his position. Um, I don't know what his position is. I, I don't think he said what his position is. He said to several other people in town. So uh, there's oh. there, it, that's all rumor, but it's it's verified from several different people. Rumor. Well, I, I and then it's kind of a hot issue. Yeah. I there's would really election. caution against rumor because people can start rumors yeah. on anything. And the people that have co had contacted me have been very, very passionate. So there's a lot of rumors flying around and a lot of people who feel very strongly about not having this. And then there are a few people who are part of economic development who are very much in favor of this. And my understanding is that these developers went to economic development and talked with them and paved the way for them to say, yes, this is what we want. And economic development has been frustrated because they've tried to get various businesses to come into town and haven't been very successful as witnessed by on 74, all those vacant business offices. And the developer who did that was like, oh yeah, we're gonna have this and we're gonna have this and we're gonna have that. And that has not proven to be the case. So this is, that's that element that economic development and it just points out these nine people who are on planning and zoning are making very important decisions. And when it comes to voting, you know, what do people think about when they hit that voting booth or do they even think about it for planning and zoning? It's a very important position. So that's what we got. And what somehow we have to convince these nine people that it's not in our best interest as a town to do this, which may or may not happen. We don't know how they're thinking. They may not care whether it's two thirds, you know, 99.9 .9 or whatever. I don't know how they're going to make their decision. Now, how about the letters? The number of letters for and against. Is this a matter of public record? Yes. We right. Yes. I'm going to send you around the letter I put in Neighbors. It has data. It tells you where to go to get the letters. It tells you, it shows you the Zoom site, the um, YouTube site for the recording and blah, 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 blah. The, the thing, the other thing though, Loretta, is that our selectmen came out in favor. Right. Mm. Publicly. So the board of selectmen, that chairman came out of in favor. Right. So we've got two of our primary commissions <laughs> kind of coming out in favor of it. And, and our town, our future chair. Came out in favor? Right. Yes. Oh. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously. You're muted again, yeah, I know. Steve. <laughs> He's also on the um, Economic Development Commission, too. Right. He, he used to be on Conservation Commission. Right. That's right. You know, none of these big ideas ever seem to work out the way the developers come in and try and present it. You know, just listening to them at, during the meeting, I felt like they were snake oil salesmen thinking, you know, here's a bunch of bumpkins that live in this town. We can bamboozle them with a promise of money, money, money. Not so many trucks coming. Oh, they won't drive through your town. And as they're talking, I'm like, you're lying about everything. You are glossing over the reality of the impact this is going to have on this town. And it's going to change it dramatically and not for the better. People and the money, 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 money isn't going to be there. Yeah, well, the trash. trash to pick up these trucks. Yeah. Well, it's going to be the bottles of pee that they throw out over on Ruby Road when they get off 84. I've right. never seen anything so disgusting as those bottles of urine on the side of the road. And we're going to have that. We'll have it. So it's not only 89. I sat, I spent two afternoons one from about 12 30 to um one and the other just today from about um uh i don't know noon to, uh, midday both of them midday 30 minutes counting trucks that came 
off 74 and turned left directly into Main Street Ashford on 44 or came from 44 and turned right onto 74. So that's the route. There were, the first time was 18 six wheel or higher trucks. I didn't count service vehicles. I didn't count oil trucks. I didn't count anything that was kind of servicing the area, just big trucks. 18 and a half hour on one day, 27 today in a half hour. Big giant trucks, 74 to 44 or 44 to 74. That's the route. And that's Ashford. We don't need to worry about 89. 74 is our road too. 44 is our road too. That's the right. middle of Ashford. So, you know, that's already without this thing. <laughs> Has anybody contacted that um, lovely woman lawyer who was... Uh, yeah, Olson. Yeah, she doesn't want to... Um, she's not really not in favor of it. She cares about the regulations and the fact that the regulations are so loosey-goosey and they're some of the loosiest goosiest in the country, I gather, that they've already opened the door to a lot of this big giant development and making those even worse is disastrous. But that's what she cares about. So she's not really anti uh, big development. She's, she's into the regulation issue. Well, but I think that's a way that people may understand better um, who are for all this stuff. Um, it's a way to present things that yes, if you have open-ended things, these are the can be the results of it. You know, be careful what you ask for, kind of thing. Um, but, the, but the developer already presented his hypothetical things that were scary enough. You don't need any scarier. You know, he showed pictures of something that could be done if he if these zoning things came through. He showed, you know, he's got a website that shows the Uxbridge, Uxbridge site with this massive warehouse with retaining walls that are like, you know, 30 feet tall to keep off, keep things off the cliff. You know, this is what he does. And he showed it to us. We saw it. Mm -hmm. How much more do you need? <laughs> There's there's one on Route 20 in Charlton too. Right. Yeah. It's Amazon supposedly right. going to be an Amazon yep. distribution center. So that's not that far away. Yep. It's hard for me to believe, which makes me wonder if they're just trying to get an open-ended development mm -hmm. park, and then uh, you know, and, and this might be what EDC wants too. They just want open-ended so that somebody, anybody will come and develop the site. And, you know, it seems reasonable that there should be the limitations that were put in place before because, you know, of all the concerns the surrounding area, et cetera, that, you know, have been mentioned already, but, um, yeah, um, yeah. They, it sounds like they just want an open-ended yeah. development license. You know, if you, if you, if you put a nuclear power plant there, I mean, the way it's the way if they actually approve this amendment, could be anything. Could be a prison, federal prison. Federal prisons, I guess, do that. They sort of wait till something happens and then they they become the user. But anyway. Well, Could I think the other thing, lab. sorry, Christine. Could be an infectious disease lab, research lab. It could be a chemical warehouse. It could be, it could be anything. I think one of the things that is important since we all seem to be very much opposed to this is to also talk with your friends and have them just write a letter or just write a little note to, um, Mike D'Amato, the zoning enforcement officer, saying, I'm opposed to this. You don't have to do anything more than that. Or even go to the meeting and just say that and tell people that this is important and that that hopefully with enough outpouring that the mind will be changed. I mean, that certainly happened with Langhamer. 
that mm -hmm. the town was ready to sell that land. And it, it wasn't that they had an evil intent on it, really. They wanted to sell that land to have more money to buy more development rights for other large areas that they wanted to preserve, you know, which on the on the face of it is a good idea. But to take um, 70 plus acres of open space and just say, OK, we're going to throw this out to the highest bidder seemed a little ridiculous because you don't have a lot of prime open space that hasn't been in some way damaged by some sort of development. So that the people did rise up, Gwen remembers this because she was very active in getting people and people came out to that meeting. It was amazing. I think there was one person who was opposed to everybody else. Was very- I don't think people knew it was contiguous with another preserve, right. which is educational. Right. So the town withdrew that application when they saw how many people. And it seems to me that there are a huge amount of people who are expressing dissatisfaction. It's just a matter of getting those people to yeah. that second hearing. I mean, the first one was long enough, but um, I, I can't Let's believe that the next one isn't going to be as long. So that's that's another thing to do in addition to writing your own letters or speaking as most of you did i think it's also important to just if you have people that you know in town just to say do you know this is going on and do you know it is on the planning and zoning to set up these regulations and once you set the regulation you can't go back on it you know those they're going to grab that and they're going to push even more about and i i I think it's sort of like, I don't know, they may or may not have a buyer for this, but if they can say, look, we push them on this over here, we can probably push them a little more. So that would make it a juicier deal, if you will, for um, one of these big uh, warehouse or distribution centers to say, yeah, this looks like a good deal. So I, yeah, I no, think, we'll, go ahead. Uh, it, the next thing they'll ask for is tax breaks. Oh, absolutely. Abatement. And then when they can't find a user, they'll ask that, that, that they get more tax abatements because they can't find a user. <laughs> the, the Garden Club wrote a letter and to the, to the whole group and saying that you have to individually write your own letter and oppose this. And, and I, of course, I did, but we just need to get more committees like that uh, and, and Loretta, you know, the, uh, you were in the Clean Energy Committee? No. Oh, okay. Well, you were in the, with the farmer's market people. I don't know if they're in town. No, most Somebody. of the farmer's market are not in town right now. Yes, yeah, Stephanie. Yeah, but Clean Energy wrote, um, and um, uh, Tony- uh, Can't hear you, Stephanie. Um, Clean Energy wrote, and and I don't know if you remember, but Tony Paticcio spoke. Uh huh. Yeah. And he actually was, I think, on planning and zoning when was. the regulations were initially made. Right. He was. Right. And those three people who were very knowledgeable about land use said they would be willing yeah. to advise or work with planning and zoning to come up with regulations that were more beneficial to the town so it is out there i mean are they going to take these people up who know what they're talking about it's it's available it's whether or not the uh planning and zoning members are open to Listening in terms of what's best for our town as a whole. I mean, I was very impressed with Willington people who took the time to stand in line and wait to talk about, you know, we are concerned about you're doing this. It's it's not the, you know, the deal that you think it is. I mean, I was impressed with that. These were not Ashford residents who stood in line. I mean, for over an hour. I mean, that's very, very considerate. And these are people who care about this whole area, because we're all affected. You know, it's something happens to one area, it's gonna affect everybody else, which we all know. And it's like, wait a minute, do you understand the impact? 
It doesn't matter if it's in a corner of Ashford, it's going to affect all of us. Yeah. So I was really proud of the Ashford citizens at the public hearing. I was really mm -hmm. proud of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, don't forget about the, um, a place like that would require enormous amounts of power too. Oh. And so power infrastructure needs to come to the site. Uh, I, I think it's been mentioned, you know, water too. Uh, so I can't imagine that they're, they could just drill wells without having a significant impact and uh, water use. Again, I don't know what a warehouse uses, but it's probably significant, especially if there are lots of employees. So, um, so there's more to it. It, it. You know, it's not just town, more town government. It's also infrastructure. They'll have to cut trees along whatever route they bring power in. Um, you know, it's big. It's bigger than just plopping down a building. Steve, I hope you'll speak in March. Um, I'm thinking about it. Oh, absolutely. You know, you guys heard, probably heard that hearing in person, the hearing, it's also on YouTube, but the letters, so everybody who talked only had three minutes. The letters were extensive, incredibly deep, incredibly forceful, a lot of information. Charlie Vittich's letters about the what what would need to be taken out, take, taken out. It's a mountain. It's a hill, snow hill. Would have to be flattened to put this thing in. The soil and in Gene Pillow's stuff, the soil and the bedrock that, that's there can't handle a septic system that they want to put in. Can't you know all these things? The site cannot handle what they want to put on it. And all of that is in the letters, which technically the planning and zoning commissioner should have read. But we should, re you should read them too. I went through and I tabulated what everybody was interested in. You know, rural character came first and water came mm -hmm. next, mm -hmm. which should be our primary interest. Mm -hmm. Oh, the but respecting and honoring the land. And the rest of the country, uh, the rest of the, the towns around us. So, you know, uh, the, that watershed, the Fenton watershed shed feeds water to 55,000 people, you know? And if we pollute it, 55,000 people are drinking our polluted water. What good citizens are we, you know? At, and at one point, I forget who it was, or whether it was fire commissioner or whether it was our board of select, our select men, said something and said the environmentalists are opposed to it. We need to make it clear, it's not just in the environment, it's a quality of life for all of us. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the dark skies we won't have, those are quality of life things. They aren't just environmental issues, dirty word, you know? So if we can write a letter that makes it clear that, you know, we're not tree hugging, we're not, I mean, yes, of course we're protecting the environment, but there's so much more than that too. It's the- We have to say we're not anti-development. Yes. This is yeah. just a wrong development. This is this massive structure is not right, the development right. we're going for, but we have to make clear we're not extremists that we're against the Economic Development Committee. Right. But what you're coming up against, what it all boils down to is greed. Absolutely. You've got to fight that. How do you fight that? It, it is, it, it's driving our government at this point. We've got to fight against the money they're promising, the blue skies they're promising, which all comes down to money. And there isn't going to be the money, like you're all saying, what has to be developed to support this huge warehouse from a tiny little town that is having problems raising money just to keep up with um, improvements we need. How the hell are we going to support this thing? And it, the developers are going to go. Once yes, it's built, they're gone. They don't care. 
they don't care. They've gotten their money out of it. Yep. And that's all they care about. Yep. They don't care about us. And that's what I think people need to understand. It boils down to the money and it's gonna fall on our shoulders. Yep. And it's not gonna yeah. be blue skies. It's Stephanie, it's true. So I don't understand. Wait, wait, Gwen, Gwen, you've been speaking a lot. Let Stephanie speak. Okay. Speak. She had her hand raised. I was, uh, I was kind of curious, and and so I I looked up, um, just it, 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 ways to prepare for an e-commerce center in your town, and it this is sort of interesting to me, um, and it it's a different take on it. It's like. Well, you're not really anti-development, but this is what you have to do first. There are 14 things, and this is from um, planning.org. I don't know, it's a, I guess a governmental thing. But first, before anything happens, you need to conduct traffic impact studies. This is what yep. the town has to do. Yep. Generate trip forecasting data undertake comprehensive site plan review and approval process, negotiate traffic mitigation agreements, create truck and van restriction zones, prohibit offsite parking of delivery vehicles, implement a traffic demand management program, establish rules for where and when to refuel, require delivery vehicles to be registered in the same municipality as the facility to capture excise taxes, ensure appropriate signage on delivery vehicles and the facility, ban on and off-site idling for facility-related vehicles, require insurance and background checks for the facility's trucks and van drivers, be informed of truck and van driver protocols like training, discipline, and incident management procedures, for example, like for speeding. And lastly, but not least, monitor the facility post-occupancy and take corrective actions as needed. Right. And that's just on traffic. That and who is qualified for traffic? This has nothing to do with all the other things, the water and the energy. And the, right. You know. So I think that there are probably other places that you can look up and say, well, these are the things. Yeah, we're for development, but we really have to address these first. And then when those are taken care of, let's go for it. But You're, see, they're not, they haven't proposed a building they mm -hmm. showed us what they could do Radical. if they propose if the text amendment were approved but they haven't uh, proposed a building and they also haven't told us users it's that they probably have lined up as potential users but they aren't sharing that with us but they've sort of tipped their head a little hand a little bit by distribution center okay that's amazon um a uh, big warehouse, there probably are multiple users. Research labs and um, mm. we, I don't know what that could be, but that's a little terrifying to me. But so they, they probably have some people in mind, just like they had for their other, uh, their eight or nine massive building things all over Massachusetts. But um, what we're, having to deal with now is just the text amendment uh -huh. which would allow these things but to ask our zoning board to look at all those elements they should be doing that to make our own zoning regulations not to have somebody else come in with with something for us right but, yeah. these guys so what these guys are doing is they want to capture want to capture a site and then when when somebody comes to them and says, I want to build this, they go, oh, well, we've got these three places, you know, um, and, and we can do anything we want at this site. Yep. Uh, and, and that's kind of the way they want it written. Yep. Um, so they've scared us with uh, distribution center, which in a lot of ways makes no sense. 
Um, uh, but that doesn't preclude something of something else that would be just as bad going in there, you know, in terms of traffic or um, a research center. Um, it doesn't seem likely, but like you said, they're not telling us, you know, and they might have, you know, something else, uh, like a, a different vendor, not Amazon, but another site where they do move things around, you know, so, um, so it's a little scary to have this open-ended thing. And, and you're right. You, you can't, they're going to, they could easily push back and say, well, we didn't say we're right. doing a distribution center. Right. So, so you have to keep it generic. And and kind of like what Stephanie said too, you know, let's address traffic and things like that and go from there. And why does it need to change? You know, why can't you live within the restrictions that are there now? And we okay. already dealt with this in 2020. Essentially, this same kind of text amendment was proposed. Planning and zoning turned it down and said, we need to address that zone for ourselves. And then they haven't gotten to it. That was 2020. So that's what they did last time. That's what we want them to do this time. Turn it down and put on their table let's address our zoning regulations for that site ourselves. That's what we want. And okay, turn, one more and then we're gonna close this because okay. we can go on all night. Which all right, right. Our turn our future, we talk about traffic safety studies and we are actually waiting for the outcome of another problem area by the dollar store where there've been a lot of accidents. And then I've seen some of the stats on the certain days and times where that's the highest likelihood of accidents they are based on in the past. So we would that's a big issue um, in our town. And what should we do? Should we have a rotary? Should we have a light? Um, but th this is a whole nother area that would have that should be studied first be before any of this. It's, it's, it's all part of this, just like Stephanie said, you did you have to look at all these things. You don't just jump into something this important, this big massive project that would totally change our town in every way. Yep. Well, I think that that would come after if they get what they want, then they would start submitting all of this or that. And this is what we're going to do about this. And that. believe me, they know what's going on. I mean, they know how to present things. They're aware of all this stuff. They're not gonna give all this to us now because what they want is to say to whoever they might have waiting in the wings is, we well, you know, we got this, don't worry about this. We got this covered, we got that covered, you know, you know that kind of thing. So I think it behooves all of us to do whatever we can. And clearly we have, you know, everyone is in agreement that we don't want this. And so, um, we'll all save the 13th to be there and to either say our piece or to listen to what other people are saying and doing. And Christine will send something to me and I will send it out to all of you. And if you have any comments, please add to it. And then we'll send it out to planning and zoning and uh, <laughs> join the long list. Of yes. And let's let it go. And that's a good thing. That, that people are involved and they're learning about how our town operates, which is a great thing, I think. I mean, a, a person said to me, well, why would something so important only be at a, 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 a planning and zoning meeting? Why isn't it a vote for the whole, the whole town voting? Right, <laughs> because it's a planning and zoning issue and planning and zoning you know, is important. The zoning laws matter. So, and if you get, you know, really skilled people, they're going to tell you exactly what they know you want to hear, which is, hey, you know, this is going to save you money. It's going to be great. It's going to enhance your town. So, you know, enhancement is in the eye of the beholder, I guess. <laughs> and they have really well-paid lawyers. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, if, if uh, anyone, when I send out the thing, if you have any comments, please, you know, add to that so that 
everybody can have a piece or a say into whatever we send out to planning and zoning. Um, that's about it. I don't have anything else for tonight. Um, if anybody else has any other business, um, we can look at that or um, plan to see everybody, <laughs> I guess, on the 13th. Are we going to vote on um, last month's the minutes? I don't have the minutes here. So oh, um, okay. like I said, I just at the beginning, I'll try and gather in the last several times that we met and we can approve all the minutes at once. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, Thanks for everyone. That stuff, Loretta. <laughs> Pardon? Thanks for sending the stuff to us. That'll be useful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good enough. All right. So uh, have a good rest of the evening. Enjoy the snow. Get out your little sled. Yes. <laughs> Build Love a little snowman, snowman. Yeah. or girl. No girl. Snow <laughs> or woman yes. or little child. All right, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.